Okay, in this example, we're going to see how to solve a homogeneous first order linear ODE. An example we are doing is x times y prime plus 1 plus 1 over natural log of x times y equal to 0. And we have an initial condition that uh, y is 1 when x is e. So we do have the first step to do in this one. We didn't have that in the first example. And to order to get in that form, we basically need to get rid of any function that's in front of y prime. So could you have a number there, a constant like 2 or 5, or you could have some function of x, like x or x squared. Whatever it is, you want to divide every term by that. So we're going to divide everything by x. There, showing the division, uh, the result will leave us with just a y prime in front. And we're going to go ahead and distribute that division of x. So you can divide, divide this by x and divide that by x. Divide each of those terms by x. So we'd have 1 divided by x. We'd have 1 over natural log of x divided by x. And 0 divided by x is 0. So dividing everything by x puts uh, x in the denominator of any fraction. Or it takes a whole number like 1 and makes it 1 over x. So our p of x function is the terms in parentheses right there. So that'll be a little more challenging of an integral, but still something we can integrate. Okay, let's go ahead and now put it in the form where we can integrate it. So we're going to subtract this whole expression to the other side. Yeah? For integrating, when you say indefinite, I mean, isn't that implied? I mean, I'm saying, will we, I guess, shouldn't it be implied that it's indefinite? And it would be, you know, explicitly said if it's definite? I mean, yeah. if we're not given initial conditions, it's... Or if we're not yeah, it's not so much that you would try to do a definite integral. It's probably that um, I want people to remember to have the constant of integration that goes along with the indefinite integral. So maybe uh, remember constant. That's really what I'm trying to say. So there won't be a value for the constant, uh, assuming there is no initial condition. So. Right. So. It's now in that form. No, it's not. We've got that on the other side. We now need to divide by y to get it in that form. So we've got y prime over y. Which equals that. And there's the same p of x function we already saw earlier. But we now have it as negative, and we have it on the right-hand side. All right, now the fun begins. We get to integrate that right-hand side. Can you take the derivative? 
So what is the integral of the natural log? I think that's what you're asking. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to split these, this integral up into two integrals, right? Obviously, to do the two terms here. And the first one is the easier one. We know what the right left-hand side is going to be, right? That's just y, or natural log of y. All right, the easy one is, what's the integral of 1 over x? 1 over x. Yeah. <laughs> we, actually, we had that in the earlier example, right? This next one's not as obvious. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, u substitution. So we do u substitution, and this one will be more obvious. Think of it as. Yeah. Oh, sort of lost that. So it's 1 over x natural log of x. What if we substituted uh, u for natural log of x? So v would be 1 over x. Right. So. If you do use substitution, let u be natural log of x, then set up your du. Natural log of natural log. Wouldn't you have to let u be 1 over L of x? I mean, I know you wouldn't have to do that, but I'm just saying, as it's in the expression itself, its current form in the, its current form in the expression is that it's in the denominator. So Right, because u, u is in the denominator. I mean, the whole thing is in the denominator when it comes to that. It's x, L of x. But I guess we're saying that our u is ln of x, but in the expression it is 1 over ln of x. So I guess we're allowed to just state that our u is ln of x regardless of it being either, either reciprocal of that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, your only other choice would be to try to say u is x. And so you could try that, u and u substitution where u is x, but that doesn't really do anything, right? <laughs> so u is typically replacing some function of x. If u was just trading off for x, it would just change your variable. So, uh, yeah, u substitution, great idea. Go ahead and replace that, and uh, you end up with natural log of natural log of x. Uh, as I mentioned before, we do need a constant of integration, so there's a plus c there. So you end up getting lots of ease and natural logs with these methods because of the way you're dividing and integrating. All right, so here's our algebraic equation. Let's solve for y to get the general solution. So I'm going to have e raised to the both sides.
and we know that E and natural log are inverses, so we're just going to get Y on the left. And we're going to use those properties of exponents again with the right side. So we have these three terms in the exponent. We can write this as a product of exponentials with each of these three. So we'll have E to the negative natural log of X, E to the negative natural log of natural log of X. <laughs> That's crazy. And then E to the C. Let's go ahead and finish simplifying the right hand side. So get rid of the natural logs, you just put everything to the uh... E power. E raised to everything that's there. Yeah. So I'm going to let E to the C be my constant. And just like before, we're going to think of E to the negative natural log of X as being 1 over E to the natural log of X. Jordan's idea. And I guess we can do that with the other one. So to deal with those negatives in the exponents, we're just putting it in the denominator. Because you can't have E and natural law cancel out with those negatives there. So if you're able to skip this step and know what to do, it's fine. But this shows where those negatives are going. Yeah. Did you say putting L and apply to the exponential is the same as that's putting e to the exponent? You said you put the entire equation uh, to the exponential e? All right, you took each side of the equation and you made it the exponent with base e. So you just made the base e for everything? Sometimes it sounds confusing the uh -huh. words. It's fine. I'm, I'm going to you know, that. So, see the negatives went, and the next step is to try to have these E's and natural logs cancel out, but not all those natural logs are going to cancel out, right? We're going to be stuck with one this time. So the first E to the natural log just gives me an X. The second one, the E and one natural log go away, but I'm left with natural log of X. And you should get the same thing using the formula, so I'll let you check that. We do have an initial condition. What was it? Why is it, uh, why is it, why is it or it's equal to 1? So if we plug in E for X, we should get 1. Let's see what happens. It's nice that they gave us E, because we have a natural log there. So y is 1, c is unknown, we're trying to figure that out, x is e, and so it be e natural log of e. Natural log of e is 1, right? So 1 equals c over e again, isn't that what happened last time? C is E again. I thought I was picking one that was different enough. So we're going to take that constant and put it back in to restate the particular solution. So don't just stop once you have the constant. Go ahead and rewrite it your equation with y and x, but replace c with that constant. <laughs> Compare it to this one. So the e to the x is much log. But if you look at the original differential equations, they didn't look that similar. All right, integral validity is a similar argument to the other example. 
this is going to be a problem when x is 0, right? In fact, so much so that we get an error message. So not only is it a problem at 0 because of division by 0, but negative numbers altogether are a problem. So this isn't the best at just showing what's going on. Um, but if you remember the graph of the natural log, it's undefined for all negative values. So you actually get this big error message when you try to have it evaluated at negative values. Will it do that for 0? going to have to use positive values. No. Oh, I just didn't close this out. So that was actually the mistake. Maybe it will do it. Misread the error. Okay. So it's not plotting negative values because of the symbolic division by zero, and not being able to evaluate the log function at the negative values. Uh, it also seems like something's going on at one. Isn't the log of one zero? Log of one is zero. Very good. So since we have a logarithm in the denominator, not only is zero bad, and all negative numbers are bad, but one is bad as well. So intervals, you could choose the interval from 0 to 1. It is OK in between there, but we wouldn't choose it. right? We would choose the interval from 1 to infinity. And why is that? Because of our initial condition. It's also a bigger interval. Looks a lot like the other one. So you can't get too close to one without it blowing up. But our initial condition was when x was e. So here we'll just say the function is only defined on the intervals. Here's your choices. 0 to 1 and 1 to infinity. And e, of course, is greater than 1, so we would pick the 1 to infinity. Uh, so we've shown that you can calculate derivatives and find the do the validation process. Let's show how we can validate it with technology. So we have our differential equation and we have our solution. And we've been doing this for that first assignment, right? So I'm just going to check that it satisfies the differential equation. I'm not going to go in and check that it satisfies the initial condition, because that's pretty obvious. So to put in our differential equation, we have x times the derivative. Right? If you remember the very first one, I'll show you the original differential equation right there. So I'm going to check that it fits that. So x times the derivative plus 1 plus 1 over natural log of x times y. So there's the differential equation. And let's put in our solution is e divided by x times natural log of x. Do I need another? Yeah. 
and we get the zero validating it with sage.